Hello out there in gardening world. Welcome to another edition of what used to be called the Indoor Gardener, but now we're switching things up and we're going outside. So we're going to be called the Inside Out Gardener and we're going to follow the seasons transitioning indoors, outdoors, etc. So today we're going to go back and take a look at the banana water fertilizer controversy and hopefully I've got some logic here that's going to put this to bed and show you what an absolute waste of time it is not only making banana tea water or banana water fertilizer, but also don't waste your time. We're going to show you that it is a waste of time to soak banana um, eggshells in water to try to get calcium. So the subject came up when um, someone was talking about uh, soaking eggshells in water to get calcium that's readily available to the plant, as well as bananas, dried banana peels, to make potassium in a form that was readily available because this this dude said well you know a dried banana is 45 percent potassium and i said that's meaningless so basically soaking eggshells does not release any measurable amount of calcium just like soaking bananas does not release any measurable amount of potassium the vast majority of both ingredients remain behind in the shell and in the peel. So I told the gentleman he was wrong on both parts. And this has been substantiated time and time again. Soaking eggshells and bananas it doesn't release anything worthwhile and they can't even be measured. So I told him, I said, big whoop that dried banana peels are 45% potassium. That's by weight. And a dried banana weighs next to nothing. So 45% of next to nothing is f almost nothing. So a 10 pound bag of organic fertilizer with 5% potassium yields eight ounces of potassium because it's by weight. So you have 10 pounds, 5% of that is half a pound. So you get eight ounces of actual potassium and you would need over a pound of dried banana peels to yield that same eight ounces of potassium. So percentages mean nothing. What counts is the actual pounds or ounces of a nutrient, not some percentage. Percentage only tells you how much is contained in the item. And like we said, a banana peel that's dried weighs next to nothing. So 45% of next to nothing is next to nothing. And because a dried banana peel has, is 45% potassium, that's worthless knowledge without knowing the actual weight in pounds or ounces. Because quite simply, when you look at a bag of fertilizer, for instance, holly tone, garden tone, plant tone, a five pound bag or four pound bag these days will tell you this bag will cover X number of square feet. Or if you are farming, fertilizer or the crop is going to tell you you need X pounds or ounces per acre of, of this ingredient. So the percentage only tells you how many pounds of that given ingredient you need to achieve a corresponding correct amount of ounces or pounds. As well, potassium and calcium are wasted when applied in a formulation where it's available to the plant all at once. So if you had 45% potassium in a glass of water and you dumped it on the plant, you're gonna end up with, one th with a couple of things. You're gonna end up with potassium overload, which can most certainly cause plant problems and lead to problems with uptake or other nutrients, or if it's water soluble, it's just going to run off into the environment. I mean, a plant can only take up so much. Excess calcium and potassium in the soil can interrupt the uptake of other nutrients, causing them to become deficient. That's one of the reasons why adding Epsom salts to try to correct blossom end rot is just so plain dumb and stupid because very few soils are short in magnesium. And I can tell you right now, people out there adding Epsom salts to try to stop blossom end rot are not aware of how much magnesium is in the soil. So they say blossom end rot's caused by a shortage of calcium. Magnesium leads to more uptake of calcium. Well, if you put too much magnesium in the soil, it can replace the calcium uptake and you can actually make it even worse. Nutrients should be available to the plant when the plant needs them. And the very best way to do this is through composting, either in a compost pile or composting within the garden, such as chopping up your banana peels or crushing your eggshells, putting them in the soil and letting the microbes do the work 
So when the temperature is warming and there's the right amount of moisture, the microbes work in unison with the environment and make available what the plant needs. When the conditions change, such as cold spells in early spring, tra plant transpiration slows down along with microbial activity and no nutrients go to waste. That's how organic fertilizers work. When it's warm and you've got decent soil moisture, the plant is transpiring out the, out the leaves of the, of the plant and is drawing stuff up through the ground, through the roots, which includes moisture from the soil, as well as nutrients that are being made available in usable form by soil microbes and bacteria. And this is basically how composting works. Okay. Let's say you get a cold spell in late April, or early May, which we most certainly do here in the Northeast. Soil temperature slows down. The plant doesn't transpire as much. And guess what? The microbes slow down. They only provide what the plant needs. So let's take a look at how much potassium is actually in that banana peel. Um, so according to New Mexico State University, a dried banana peel weighs roughly 0.672 ounces. And this is assuming an 80% moisture loss during the drying process. So it's very similar to a compost pile. A compost pile is going to reduce volume by 80%. So we just chose that number there. So if a dried banana peel weighs 0.672 ounces and it's 45% potassium, it's only going to have 0 0.302 or less than one third of an ounce of potassium in that banana peel. Okay, remember that's 45% potassium, but it's three tenths of an ounce. So it would take roughly figure three bananas to come close to um, one ounce of potassium. So it would take 48 bananas to get a pound of potassium. So 48 bananas. That's a lot of bananas just to get one pound of potassium. So you're better off sticking with that bag of fertilizer that five pound bag of fertilizer with eight ounces of potassium in it because you also get the nitrogen the phosphorus and the potassium plus a lot of the micronutrients and quite often beneficial bacteria and mycorrhiza not to mention wasting all that water and tying everything up to you know soaking anything so that's the case right there of why it's such a waste of time to soak eggshells or banana peels. Compost them. And in another one of these groups, uh, one of the, the gardeners touting the benefits of banana water said she feeds her plants banana water every single day. And of course, the plants love it. Well, uh, if you had a lot of potassium in that water and you're feeding them every day, you're going to end up giving your plants a potassium overdose. So it seems quite evident if you're feeding your plants banana water every single day, there can't be a lot of potassium in that water. It's just as simple as that. And the fascination of why banana peels are so significantly better for roses than any other plant has yet to be proven by science. So thanks for listening. I'm Greg Dreis on what used to be the Indoor Gardener. Now we're heading outside and this podcast is now called the Inside Out Gardener. If you have any questions or information, you can pick up this podcast on Spotify and Anchor and a bunch of others out there. Uh, send me your questions via Facebook, um, Instagram, etc. And just want to say welcome. I know it's been a while since we've been on. It's been uh, quite busy. I've been pretty much working seven days a week since April, and I think we did our last podcast back in May. But we're back with regular podcasts, uh, a little more pertinent and relevant information since we are now the Inside Out Gardener, and we'll just follow you through the seasons, indoors and outdoors. Once again, thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.